this video, we're talking about estimating a population proportion. Um, let's first talk about the uh, different ways you could say proportion. So you could say proportion, you could say rate, or you could say percentage. They're all the same thing, right? Okay, so um, you hear proportions all the time in the media, so it's a very um, important topic in that sense because there's a lot of nice, interesting things we want to know about that are expressed as proportions. For example, a, a pretty interesting uh, topic is divorce, right? So people always want to know about the divorce rate in America. And you hear the statistic all the time that 50% of new marriages end in divorce. So that's an example of a proportion, right? 50%. The divorce rate is 50%. Okay, so um, let's talk about how we're going to estimate this population proportion. We're going to basically form a confidence interval around something called the sample proportion. The sample proportion is this guy, p hat. P with a hat on top, P hat. He is the sample proportion. All right, the other thing we want to say about this guy is it has a formula, and the formula is going to be X over N, where X is essentially the number of subjects having the trait that you're interested in. So, number of subjects. having the trait over n, of course, is the total number of subjects for the sample size, right? Okay, so we're uh, familiar with fractions, of course, and so when we divide these two, the x will always have to be uh, less than or equal to n. So of course, the highest number this can achieve is 1 in this case, right? So it's the number of subjects having the trait over the total sample size. In the case of divorce, it would be the number of you know, couples that were divorced over the total number of couples we looked at, right? That would give you the sample proportion. All right, so this is our point estimator of the population proportion. It's a single number that's used to estimate that quantity. But we learned, of course, that an interval estimator has a desirable trait of having that confidence level that we like. So we're going to form an interval around this guy by basically calculating a margin of error and adding and subtracting it uh, to this p hat value. So let's talk about the four step procedure then to do this. Okay, so first thing you're always going to do when you come across a problem is going to be to record the data. So our step one is going to be record the data. And in that step, we're typically going to have the following items we're going to need a sample size. We're going to have a p hat. Of course, p hat can either come as a percentage directly in the problem, or it can be listed as x over n, where they'll tell you the number of subjects in the problem that had the trait, and then the total number of people involved in the study, or total number of things involved in the study, right? And then from there, we're going to calculate something called q hat. q hat is 1 minus p hat. Essentially, it's the leftovers from 100%, right? Like if half the new marriages end in divorce, the other half of the marriages don't end in divorce. If I told you that 30% of the population smokes, 70% of the population does not smoke, right? So that's the relationship between these two. And then lastly, of course, we often have um, a confidence level, right? And from a confidence level, we can determine alpha. So these are the things we need in the data step, where we record the data. Then our step two of the process, is always going to be to get a table value, a critical value, a critical z value in this case. So it'll be z alpha divided by 2. That's our multiplier. We want to find that value. So our second step is to find z alpha divided by 2, determine what that is. Of course, that'll be based on whatever our confidence level is, right? And of course, our alpha, alpha divided by 2. All right, and the third step in the process is going to be to determine the margin of error. So the margin of error, this is the value that you hear often about when you're uh, listening to CNN and they say they did a poll and they found out that 55% uh, of the population claims they're going to vote for the president again with a margin of error of five points. When they say that margin of error of five points, this is exactly what they're talking about, those problems where they're talking about a proportion or a rate. So the formula for this margin of error is going to be z alpha divided by 2 times the standard error for p hat. That's going to be p hat times q hat over n. p hat times q hat over n, all of those for That's your margin of error formula. Of course, you would have all these items already at that point, so it's just plugging numbers into a formula. Very easy to do. All right, and then 
finally, the last step, of course, is step four. And it's the easiest step of the process. It's where we take our point estimator, p hat, we subtract the margin of error we found in step three from it, and then we take p hat and add the margin of error to it. And that'll be it. And then you'll say, you know, the standard statement, we are blank percent confident that the true proportion lies between this and this, right? Okay, that's the procedure, the four-step procedure to estimate population proportion. One thing I want to talk about before we leave is this quantity here. This quantity is called the standard error of p hat. So this square root part, not the z alpha divided by 2. By adding that in, you get the margin of error. If you want to the standard error for p hat, it's the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. The reason why I want to mention this is because a lot of people take statistics and never know what a standard error is. They have no concept of what that means. So I just want to make sure you understand what it means. Say I went out and wanted to estimate the divorce rate, for example. So I went out and interviewed couples. Say each time I'm going to interview 100 couples. And I'm going to ask how many of those you know, ended, had a, a marriage that ended in divorce. Okay? So I'll go through and look at that. So maybe I look at records, right? marriage records, and see which couples filed for divorce sometime down the road in the last 10 years or something. Something like that, right? Either way. If I have 100 couples that I'm looking at, I'll get a certain percentage of them. Let's say sometimes I get 51 couples out of 100. And if I go back to the courthouse and look at new records, I might get another sample that has 49 out of 100, and another one that has 50 out of 100, and another one that has 52 out of 100, right? Each of those times then, I would have a different point estimator, p hat, for the divorce rate, right? It would vary. It might vary, you know, sometimes it would be 51, sometimes 50, sometimes 49, something like that, right? So the p hat will change because the sample data is different, right? Different people, different couples involved in each sample, therefore we'll have different percentages from time to time, right? Sometimes it'll be the same and then other times it'll be different. So the point is, is that p hat will vary because it's not the population value, it's not a fixed value, right? It's going to vary based on the sample. And what this quantity represents is the standard deviation of that quantity p hat. So you know it's going to vary if you plotted them on a number line and looked at it, how clustered would that set be? those numbers be very clustered, well that would be illustrated by a very small standard error. If it was going to be a large standard error, then you'd see those p hat values vary widely, there'd be lots of variation. That's essentially what a standard error is. Of course, to make it into the margin of error, you multiply by this multiplier, z alpha divided by 2.